Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thorne. You know, we have people in the world that never ever doubt themselves. We have people out there that are 100% on the dominance scale. And you know, those people, they are absolutely 100% confident in everything they say and do. They always believe that they are right and they never think they could possibly make a mistake. Similarly, we have people on the other end of the scale that doubt everything from every waking minute of their life to every single fact or truth or tidbit that we can gog and know about the world around us. We have those that run 100% on the doubt scale and we have those that never ever doubt or question themselves. Now the interesting thing is, you know, those that are absolutely 100% confident might be dead wrong and those that are 100% on the uncertainty scale might be completely right on facts and decision making. And the problem is, you know, in groups and in group decisions, it is usually the ones that are dominant that make the decisions and it's usually those that are conscientious and careful that sit and listen and let the dominant people make the mistake. So a lot of the time the world is built to favor those that are you could say alphas in the sense of uh, having high confidence and high belief on themselves. Now interestingly I identify as somebody that is uh, in the middle. I believe uh, I'm very confident and I, sometimes I'm a bit too proud in my ability and my belief in myself and that's why I'm comfortable putting myself out on camera. But I'm also kind of 100% on the uh, anxiety scale which is why I spend so much time uh, going away to look at the facts and to study and to think and to research my work. I, when I'm on the stage, when I'm talking to people, I am absolutely confident about what I'm talking about. But when I'm off camera, when I uh, hide and withdraw to myself, I'm 100% on the uncertainty scale. So to you guys, I present sometimes the image, the stereotype of confidence. But uh, to myself and when I'm on my own, I am the opposite of. And that means, you know, a lot of the time I felt like the anxiety I have when it comes to my own work and my own theories and my own ideas, my tendency to doubt everything, my tendency to question everything is why I spend so much time and so much devotion to my work and to developing new ideas. If I was satisfied, I would run off with the first bad idea I had. But because I am a person that is prone to overthinking things, I get the chance to really sit down and develop and work through my theories. And that's also why I believe that uh, in the end, my work is more thought out and more carefully developed. And uh, so I believe like neuroticism and conscientiousness, as we could call it, is a strength and a superpower, you know, in the world of today, you know, um, being confident, being dominant, being decisive can be a problem. You know, as soon as you make up your mind about something, you stop listening to new information. A lot of the time we have people out there that only absorb and listen to things that already agree with their own worldview. You know, you have those in the world, uh, politicians, you know, people that just run off and they have this strong worldview and they will only attract ideas to f that fit with this worldview and they will reject anything that seems to disagree with it. And that's why, these kind of people score so low on learning and on the ability to learn and take in new information and to develop their perspectives. You know, when life is trying to teach them a lesson, they often struggle to listen. So that means a lot of time these kind of people will hit the wall over and over again and they will keep running at the wall with more ferocity, you know, and they will be more and more pushy and more and more strong about what they are selling. So sometimes people will overcompensate, you know, for uh, the fact that they doubt and the fact that they are taking little time to their work by spending more time selling it and selling it and selling it over and over again, packaging it, repackaging it, and putting and adding on more and more bullshit to what was already completely worthless. So, the lesson I'm trying to sell you with this video, the idea I'm trying to think about is 
how dominant or how confident you are or how confident the person is says nothing about how much they know. So if somebody is going to be very confident about something at a meeting or in a group discussion, take a second to think that maybe they are just confident. Maybe they aren't actually sure of themselves. Maybe they don't actually know. Maybe it's just that they try to appear like they know. So the idea of people that run strong on the dominant scale, the people are, you know, these people are very passionate and they want to be right and they want to know and they want to figure it out. And, you know, I think that's their problem. They want so badly to be right. They want so badly to know what's going on. And they are so forceful, so fierce, so aggressive in figuring out what's going on as fast as possible and telling everyone else and getting everyone else to listen that I think they forget, you know, that important moment of sitting down. There is an important moment to sitting down, to sleeping on or something, to waiting before you make a decision. And I say this as a person that takes way too long time to make a decision. There is a superpower to waiting because it gives you the time to find perspective and to see all sides and all viewpoints. Now, sometimes I think the conscientious people that spend more time on their work and are more careful are also a little bit more neurotic. But other times I think that might be an illusion as well. You know, I think a lot of time uh, those hyper-passionate people I call dominant people, uh, they are often they are often more neurotic than what they appear, and more afraid of being questioned, more afraid of people disagreeing with them, more afraid of uh, making a mistake or being proven to be a bullshitter. Similarly, you know, those that um, are very conscientious, they might appear neurotic even when they're not. Sometimes we assume that just because they think about something, that means they are neurotic about it. And there's a difference. People have often thought that my thinking about something is me worrying about something. But a lot of the time I don't feel that way. A lot of the time I feel calm, confident, and stable when I am thinking about something. So a lot of the time, doubt, skepticism, thinking carefully about something, weighing perspectives, trying to see different sides of something, has nothing to do with worrying about something or being uncertain or neurotic about something. It is just a, and this is the healthy thing. There is a healthy part of every drive as much as there is the unhealthy part of every drive. The healthy part of every drive is that absolute desire for the truth, that absolute will to figure out the puzzle, that absolute desire to want to know what's really, really going on and how to best put it to practice and how best to do it. So if you're a conscientious type, embrace that as your superpower and take comfort and shift your perspective on your own conscientiousness. It is not a weakness, it's not an insecurity, it is a genuine desire for truth and for correct, rightful action. That's it for today. Thanks everyone for tuning in and hope to see you all in the next video.